I think the New York Jets pull off the upset. I do too. With a double digit point win. Not that part. Saving the season. I mean, what can I tell you? I'm just saying, I give it to you. What you do with it is your business, not mine. Greg Jennings, Willie Cologne, very quickly, because I know it's not the focus for the majority of you, but how about them New York Jets? <laughs> That's right. How about that? Oh, was that 30 points of offense yesterday? Yeah. With the best field goal kicker in the sport and Zach Wilson playing like schoolyard ball. I forgot that Randall Cobb was even a Jet, and he had a touchdown sure. yesterday. I did. It was only his fourth catch all year for the New York Jets. Was that I, Randall? That was, <laughs> no, that was Gibson. That was Gibson. No, I'm sorry. No. But oh. Zach Wilson showing everybody what the Jets have seen in him in practice. Of course, we've just never seen it on a Sunday, three years into his career. Give that kid credit. Where all the smoke is around him. Oh, he doesn't want to play. Oh, his uh, career's a failure. He'll be out of the league. Blah, blah, blah. Dude showed up in a real NFL game and threw for more than 300 yards and beat the vaunted Houston Texans. What happened to the Texans? Because the better quarterback yesterday was Zach Wilson, not C.J. Stroud. Spot the line. I I will say this. Zach Wilson, he has this ability to when be his back is all, way, all the way in the corner, yeah. crouched up against the yeah. wall to find a way to punch himself He's like out. a raccoon. It, it, a yeah. raccoon? Yeah. Literally. That come raccoon right. me. You they get a come, raccoon in the corner, they, they come, come out come, scratching the fight. But fighting. you know what raccoons eat? Trash. And that's what he's been <laughs> thus far. So, <laughs> we'll play it. let's, I get, I get let's be keeping 100. 27 out of 36, 300 yards, two touchdowns. Did have the one fumble loss. Uh, bigger picture now, as you see his numbers right there, which is best game, obviously. This year, maybe his career. Game uh, of his yeah. career. All good. It, may, it might have been his best game of his career. 100%. But the flip side of that, we should focus more very quickly on the Houston Texans. They're in trouble. And they're in trouble because first Tank Dell goes down last yeah. week. He's done for the yeah. year. Nico Ryan, yes, yesterday leaves Probably. the game. Uh, I'm not sure his status you're going forward. You know, they've lost three or four legitimate guys uh, on that team. And C.J. Stroud took a pretty good beating uh, by the Jets' defense yesterday as well. So now the question is, how does Houston recover from a bad loss? I'm sure they had this game circled on their calendar as what should have been a win. Yeah, they can't because this was a concussion injury, right? So now you question it from the neck up what the state of C.J. Stroud. It wasn't yeah, like – his head hits the turf right yeah, there. Yeah, that was yeah. a big hit by Quentin Williams who had a monster game. That, first of all, the Jets defense played out of his Yes, they did. Oh, yes, they I did. don't know if anybody is a fan of Sauce Garner, but he honestly had his most complete game yesterday. He kid was it's all over the It also shows place. you, you know, when your offense can hold the ball for a little bit and can put points on the board, it changes and give the credit entire to the offensive line. aspect – of what you can do defensively because yeah. playing with the lead is something the Jets have never done, right? And having the ability to just rear back and go get the quarterback. Now, look, injuries were a part of it. He was missing his starting tight end, mm-hmm. both of his wide receivers. Yeah. No joke, they had running backs playing wide receiver in the second <laughs> half yesterday. But the Jets took advantage of it. But on top of that, this is where you got to give credit to Zach Wilson because a lot of times when we talk about some of his negative issues is not being poised in the pocket, his mechanics being off. But overall, this was a total team win led by Zach Wilson. So let me play uh, just Fantasy Island here for a second. Mm-hmm. They have the Miami Dolphins coming up next week. Rightfully so. They're double-digit underdogs in Miami. The Dolphins have already beaten them once, as you know. After that, though, Washington, they stink. Obviously, Joe Flacco in Cleveland. And New England's got no offense at all. Can I dream the dream, Greg? Can I dream the dream that somehow, some way, the Jets pull off? Stop laughing. Pull off the upset against not Miami. Great. Can the Jets run the table to nine and eight? You know, what, is that possible? You know what? Interesting. I, I think it is. Possible. What is that barely hanging on right there? I, I think it is possible. Talk about I'm, Greg. And, and look, look at the screen before you say no, that. No, no, no. Look I'm, at the screen I'm, looking, before you I'm talk. looking at the screen. We're in it. I, I'm gonna tell you why I think it's possible because of because of what we just talked about about that defense. If Zach Wilson can be half of what he was yesterday, and mind you. The weather wasn't great. No, right. Like no. he was doing that in inclement weather. Rain. It's like if you can be pouring, this yeah. has to be the most frustrating position of a head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, 
fan base, all of the above, when you watch a guy who's so up and down and you hear the support coming out of the locker room and from the head coach about what he's been in practice, and then you see this and it's like, oh, is this what they've been talking about? And you know about? what the key moment in yesterday's game was when he fumbled the ball, trying to get a first down running the ball, and it was the right move. Got out of the pocket, got out, out of trouble, got the first down, obviously gets hit and fumbles the ball. The first guy over to him on the side that I noticed this was Quinton Williams saying, it's all right, big dog. We got you. you. And you know why that happened? Talk about it. When you're able to put up points and you are providing something that's beneficial to your defense, they're like, no, we got you. We got you. You, you put, <laughs> you're playing today. We got you. And, yeah. and that's why I say they can it's run different. the table. Because if he plays half as good as what he's done or anywhere close, this defense is going to provide you opportunities to be in ball games. Now, look, we're yeah. obviously way premature on this, but I will, I, I will point out <laughs> way? way premature on this. That's this right. is what pisses me off. Go about ahead. It. Because I consider you very level headed at Thank times. You. Thank you've you. been a very realist about the Jets, right? Thank you. What Thank pisses you. me off the yeah. one conversation we haven't talked about, which makes my stomach turn. Go. He played so well yesterday, he may remain on the team. Yeah. Well, well, he so may what? remain a Jet. He could be my backup quarterback. I got Aaron Rodgers next Have year. you seen enough of Zach Wilson? Does one game convince you that he deserves to be on the team? I think Zach Wilson proved again yesterday that he's an NFL quarterback. <laughs> this is the problem. And that's the problem. And you're the problem. Because you support this. If Jake Browning's the answer in Cincinnati, he's an NFL quarterback, right? If Joe Flacco is an NFL <laughs> quarterback, then that guy right there <laughs> is also an NFL quarterback. Now, I this will is, uh, I'll time at the top. He's I know, us. I know, One I know. One game. I know. Now you're a believer. I'm a Jets addict. What do I'm going to tell you? You kill me, man. I, I'm a believer in the moment. We're not we hanging get, out no more. If we what, get else, spat, if we what else can he? What else can what? he hang his hopes on? Thank you. But this is my thing. Listen. He is who he is. This offensive line had a great game. Yeah. This defense shut him out, right? Zach Wilson played like a guy who had nothing to lose. If we beat Miami, we're running the table. We'll be 9-8. and eight. It still might not be good enough to get in. But don't forget, if you look at the, the thingamajig there, the, the standings that we put up there a second ago, right, whatever that was, remember this. We own tiebreakers against a lot of teams. <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you do right. this. Because don't right. forget, the first tiebreaker is head-to-head. Then, depending on whether you're tie-breaking for a division or a wild card, it either goes to division record or conference record. But I own Denver. I own the Houston Texans. Don't get me started now. We're two games back, but I got the tie-breakers. How do you see it? And I play the Cleveland Browns. The How Buffalo about that? Bills. You I mean, split against the Bills. Split against right. the Bills. So then it becomes conference play. Right. Right. Listen, well, if, they, if they get past Miami, I'm going to be tough to deal with that week. But we, we're a week away on that. <laughs> Speaking of the Browns, just very quickly here, you got to give Joe Flacco, a cigar store Indian himself, a lot of credit. And you, because you're a Flacco Did guy. Did I say it? To be fair, Naguchu is open. Who? Like, no, who? How do you Nugucci. say it? Naguchu? <laughs> Nijoku? I apologize. Naguchu is like a man amongst boys in this Monster. game yesterday. But he's wide open. Like, can someone guard the tight end of the slot receiver no, for Jacksonville? Freak. And let me tell you something. Give Flacco Break. credit. Give the don't Browns give credit. Don't give us Don't give no the credit. The Browns solidify their playoff positioning. And, you know, I love the city of Cleveland and their people. But the flip side of this, do the Jacksonville Jaguars know how to play defense? <laughs> and when's Trevor Lawrence going to make a big play to win the game and not throw an interception in the other team's red zone? When's that going to happen? First of all, man, man should have been on the field. He got he pretty much Another called the field last week. So the fact that yeah, he's playing I give him a lot of credit for yeah. playing, oh. but that dude is a turnover machine. And here's interception number three on the day. Yes. And that one sealed it right there as the Cleveland Browns hang on to win uh, against the Jaguars 31-27. to Let me say this. Say it. For uh, both teams coming into this game, the importance of this game. Jags, of course, off the bad loss. Lawrence gets hurt last week. Cleveland. You know, backup quarterback, is Flacco going to be the guys at DTR who did get a little playing time on fourth and one, yeah. you know, to, to run the ball successfully, which he did. This was a huge game, more so for Cleveland than Jacksonville because the Jags kind of own the division still record-wise, but give the Cleveland Browns a lot of credit. That defense has not been dominant no. the last couple of weeks. And while they still gave up almost 30 points, when they had to make a play, and there were four or five times in that game when it looked like the Jags had momentum mm -hmm. and were going to flip the script, 
The Cleveland Browns, whether you want to give them credit or blame Lawrence, I don't care. The Browns' defense got the job done. Yeah, and you kind of expect their defense to get the job done because of what they've been all season long. Even though they gave up a lot of points, you got to give credit again to your guy. You called Old it. Man no Flacco. Flacco. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I, I've, I've looked at this situation, and I'm starting to side with you simply because when you look at the Cleveland Browns and who they are, they're very reminiscent, and they're nowhere near the Baltimore Raven team that, that he right, won the Super Bowl sure. with. But the way they're built, good offensive line, yeah. really good defense. You don't have Gotta to run put game. and shoulder everything on Joe Flacco. This is a very similar situation. A really good offensive line, good defense that is going to step up and keep but, you in games, allow your quarterback to make those throws. That's what they've done. But this is what this is what you got to understand. Like, every backup that's played for the Browns have won a game for the Browns. That's right. right? That's which right. Is, which is impeccable. On top of that, the relationship he has, you talk talking about Joe Flacco, the relationship he has with Amari Cooper and David Njoku right now for only being there short pity retired needs to be talked about because that shows you why a guy who has 108 starts underneath his belt yep. is why you go get him off the couch. Isaac, he's and a the offensive guy. line, bottom line, who's probably the top five in the league, dominated yesterday. Real quick, one aspect of this game I want to show you, and I question Coach all the time. Uh, Doug Peterson made a decision. It didn't cost them the game, but it could have. They scored a touchdown. They get within 31-27, okay? And then they, and that's the final score of the game. Then he decides with no timeouts and a minute 30 left to go for two. Yeah. Now, here's the upside. You go for two, you're down by two, right? Yep. You don't convert the two-point conversion. Now you're down four. You need a touchdown. And I bring it up because you have no timeouts left. You got an onside kick regardless of the outcome of the two-point conversion. But if you don't convert it, and they didn't, now you need a touchdown. It was one of the most mind-boggling stupid decisions by a coach on Sunday. And I still, for the life of me, I don't know if nobody asked him about it. But it was a minute 33 on that clock. Yeah, but what's the benefit of going for two? Well, you, you When the don't. downside is, if you don't convert it, let's say you get the onside kickback. You have no timeouts, right. a minute 30 left. Now you got to go 50 yards as opposed to yeah. go 15 yards and tie the game. Yeah, you clearly don't want to go to overtime. If you're Doug Peterson, that's what he's thinking. Wow. Exactly. Quarter, exactly. Why, because yeah. Joe Flacco scares you no, that much? It, it has well, nothing to do you. With he Joe, was moving and grooving, right? Joe. Has nothing to do with Joe Flacco. It has everything to do with your quarterback and understanding his situation and, and injury your defense and what you're dealing with in your defense. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.